why a Linux phone is interesting as Zuck. Now you've heard me before and you know that the idea of a phone with hardware switches are critical for data privacy. And I'm looking at all the new phones like the new iPhone 11 and frankly, I'm bored. I already have an iPhone 10, nothing new. But beyond that, let's look at why a Linux phone is cool as Zuck. Many of you don't even use Linux and many of you probably don't care. You just use your phone running iOS or Android or your computer running Mac OS or Windows. Life's simple, no need to complicate it. It just works. From my own personal experience, I've used Linux servers for a long time. In fact, my apps are running Linux servers on the back end. My Bytes VPN service runs on Linux. I've been selling products that use Linux on a Raspberry Pi, like my Brax Wi-Fi VPN and Tor router. I'm about to release my Brax SecureNet security cameras and alarms, and they all run Linux servers on a Pi. But I really haven't spent a lot of time running a GUI desktop on Linux. I'm absolutely a newbie when it comes to the Linux desktop environment. Hard to say I'm a newbie at anything, but there's only so much time in a day. Recently though, I started writing some programs that are made to run on a Linux desktop environment. Now, my reason for doing this, frankly, is to see if I can create apps that will run on a Linux phone. I don't have a Linux phone yet, though I'm waiting for my pre-ordered Librem 5. And then I realized that many people don't really understand the implications of what I can do on a Linux phone. First, let's talk about Linux in general, since like me, many of you are probably new to Linux desktop. I will talk about a Linux phone in particular after this. Do you realize that Linux can actually run so many mainstream apps that you think are only available on Windows and Mac? Let me just name a few. Chrome and Firefox browsers. GIMP, which is a powerful photo editor you can use instead of Photoshop. For live streamers, OBS Studio. For gamers, Steam. You wanna talk in your computer? Skype. Handle your audio recordings? You have Audacity. Email, Thunderbird, which is the only email client I recommend anyway. Play any kind of video file? VLC Media Player. Music Streaming, Spotify. Kindle, there's a Kindle Cloud Reader on your browser or you can convert the Kindle book to another format like EPUB. Use time-based one-time passwords on any website, Authy. Make documents, spreadsheets, presentations. LibreOffice. This is your Microsoft Office replacement. Web apps. Any site that has a web app for a browser will work. This includes my own app, Brax.me. And as an icing on the cake, do you want to run Windows programs? You can run a virtual machine like VirtualBox or GNOME Boxes. Can you run a virtual machine on iOS and Android? Hell no! By the way, all of these apps are free. So surprisingly, there's a solution for most things on Linux and the bulk of the options are free and many are open source. Now here's the other surprise. These apps will all work on the Linux phone. Yes, you may have to use a separate monitor until these apps are modified for a small touch screen, but they will work. As some of you may have heard, either from me or others, there's a couple of Linux phones that are slated for release shortly. The Librem 5 is starting shipping in a few days to the lucky first batch, and the Pine phone is also releasing a development batch in the fourth quarter of 2019. 
What is so interesting about this is that a Linux phone is basically nothing more than a regular Linux computer with a cell phone integrated and a small touchscreen. Everything else about it is the same as a regular Linux desktop. Now, this may be boring to many of you, but to be able to run command line on a phone is really cool to me, since I can do anything. An iOS and Android phone is completely locked down. I have to use whatever apps are available to me and approved by the Apple App Store or Google Play. It's really hard to do anything with full control on these restricted platforms. But there is no restriction on a Linux phone. In fact, I could use it as a desktop computer simply by plugging in an HDMI monitor and then connect a Bluetooth keyboard. And yet, this is just a normal phone. There really haven't been good solutions that mix the capabilities of a full computer with a phone. The phones are dumbed down and are really made for entertainment. I could do programming from a Linux phone and test it right on the device. And the commands will be identical to a desktop. On Linux, I have full control. I can load hacking tools like the one from Kali Linux and load it directly on the phone. I'm a ham radio operator as well. And it's super cool to realize that I can run some ham radio apps directly on the phone like auto translate Morse code. Now, I'm curious about how powerful the CPU is on a new Librem 5 phone. I searched the web and apparently the Amazon Fire HD8 uses the same kind of CPU. So maybe it will be powerful enough. I'm running Linux on an old third generation Intel i5 and they're pretty snappy. I hear the CPU on the Pine phone is more along the lines of a slow Raspberry Pi though. So maybe there will be more limitations there. You know how Facebook can spy on us just based on our MAC addresses? I talked about it in another video. Well, I can program my Linux OS to spoof my MAC address pretty easily. Can I do that on iOS or an Android phone? Nope, they lock that stuff up. For a software developer like me, having full control of a device will be a first on a phone. I made an app, for example, which is already running, that can analyze my network and see if someone is spying or hacking my device or my network. I can even jam the bad guy and knock him off my network. Can you do that on iOS? I don't think so. And yet, even in today's environment, you could do this on a Raspberry Pi. Here, I'll show you a quick demo.
I'm not even intending to distribute this app. I just did it because I can. And I'll think about distribution later on. Because a Linux phone is identical to a desktop other than for the touch display and form factor, it gives me a single productivity device that I can use as a normal phone, and yet allows me full access to a computer when I need it. Mobile tech support would be possible. Full desktop resolution is only an HDMI cable away. The best part is that there's no relearning. If you know how to do something on a Linux box, the same knowledge would apply to a Linux phone. But the main benefit to me is freedom. The ability to decide for myself what I want to run on my phone without caring about the opinions of Apple or Google. They cannot block any apps or websites I want to use. They don't get to censor what I want to see. They don't get to track a lot of what I do since I'm not on their infrastructure. Freedom, people. Now, freedom comes at a price. You will be responsible for screwing up your own phone and having to reinstall it. Sorry, there'll be no such thing as rooting and you can install and reinstall at will. Likely, you can't even have quick access to tech support. You'll have to search for answers on your own. I'm okay with that, since I'm a techie anyway. May be hard for some of you. It's really not much different when you screw up your Windows computer. Now, what's severely lacking in Linux are apps that are sized for a touchscreen. But having made a touchscreen app already on Linux, I can see that this will be quickly resolved. It's not that hard to do. As always, my friends, if you like my content, please hit that subscribe button and slam that notification bell. And thank you for watching. Thank you.